Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Um, before I start I'll leave a link up in the top corner there that's for the channel's Facebook page that's where you get to see some of the stuff I do at university and some of the watchmaking things I get up to as well. So anyway look what we have today. I personally think this is lovely. This is a Junkens. This is their chronos uh, chronoscope, their master or meister chronoscope. Now basically Junkens is a German brand. They've been around for, believe it or not, over 160 years. And I even I didn't know that myself. I knew they were a German band, uh, brand. I used to own one of their Mega One, uh, sorry, Mega 1000 PVD black watches many years ago. And I, I, I've always been impressed with Young Hands because it's one of these brands which has stuck to basically their core DNA. If you see one of their watches, you automatically know or have a damn, yeah, have a really good idea that it is a Junghans. This is kind of, they've got that signature look, the Bauhaus kind of design philosophy. And you can see that in abundance here. But anyway, before I get too far into this review, I've got to say a massive thank you to Ryan and the team over at Francis and Gay of Commentary for allowing me to review this watch. They've got loads of stock. I'm even pulling that brand you haven't seen before. That's how much stock they have. Uh, if you're in the Midlands, be well worth popping in. If you're further afield, I'll leave a link in the description below to their website. So anyway, let's talk sizes first. It's a bizarre case size on this one. 40.7 mil. The thickness is about 14 millimeters, which isn't bad considering it's a chronograph. That is pretty impressive. The look to look is a very wearable 45 millimeters. This means this would fit on any sized wrist really. So even the smallest of wrists, you'll find this will fit on no problem at all. So anyway, we're zooming in on that dial and have a look at it. Just check it out. I think it looks absolutely super. Superb. The level of detail is amazing. Just the hands alone, lovely polished hands. They have a real sheen to them and you still have the aluminous material in the centre there. So you do get a certain amount of glow at night, but to be fair, not the strongest at all. But again, this isn't really that kind of watch. Now, if I move a second, the hour hand there, you can see we just have very minimal text on this and it suits this kind of dial. You have their motif, young hands, chronoscope and the made in Germany down there. And I like the fact that you see, you know, how much curvature there is to this dial. I really think, you know, it's, it's one of those things you don't see very much. Um, long jeans have started doing it again so you don't see many brands where you actually get that and i believe the hour hand is also bent over and another really kind of like interesting fact is the hour markers also follow that curvature and i think that's just it's it makes it that little bit harder to produce and looks really good for it the minute track and every five and the 510 and so forth are printed on the dial. I love the fact that when you look through and you see the day date window there, the dial looks so incredibly thick. There's a real chunky kind of element to this dial, but yet you still have a, a very small kind of indentation frame in the date round there. And it's it just adds that little bit more. And again, with the subdials, instead of being just simply lowered down on a different level, you still have this curvature to them. And it just makes producing a dial that little bit harder, but I like the fact they've gone to the effort of actually doing that. Uh, let's actually hear the chrono start while, uh, while we've got one. Very solid um, sounding chrono there. Now, as we look around, I say we have a made in Germany here, and overall, I just think the dial is just pure class. It looks really, really clean, crisp, and tidy. Let's do a reset. Snaps back perfectly. Now, as you come past this, look at the size of that crystal. It is absolutely huge. Um, not many watches you can see a crystal of this depth. It's one of those, I, you know, I'd hate to try and replace one of these, to be fair. You do have this machined edge to it there, but the rest of it just comes around. The distortion off this is phenomenal. 
it really is quite uh, quite something. It must be about three, four millimeters deep. It's it is crazy, but you know, it just looks superb. Now the actual body of the watch, we've got this kind of dish going on. You see how everything just tapers around. It does look really cool. And you get this real taper, and then you have these really small. But again, angle down lugs. This allows this to sit quite nicely down on the wrist. The finishing is spot on, can't fault it. Um, you come round here, you have a signed crown. Now to be fair, this isn't a screw down crown. It's, but it's not a dive watch, let's face it. It's not screwed down, but you still get, I believe it's 50 meters of water resistance to this watch. And another kind of interesting thing I like is the way the crown it's got it, it's following this same form again so you have an ellipse versus a standard round kind of uh, pusher sorry for the chronograph there it's just a nice little kind of touch they do one thing i would be aware of or make you aware of is the the leather strap on this watch as you can see is very very close to the body of the watch so this is no problem obviously for their in-house straps but if you wanted to fit an aftermarket leather strap if it's a little bit chunkier say i don't think you'd actually be able to fit this on here i'm not 100 percent sure the back of a watch you get a lovely view of that movement now young hands call it the j8801 but really what that equates to is a eta 7750 now i believe this is a top grade version the reason being we have the blue screws and we have the decoration going on there so i believe it is actually a top grade i did put this on uh power reserve i should say is about 48 hours i put this on the time grapher and it was pulling a respectable plus 4.5 seconds in the one position i had it held in and the amplitude was really high, I think over 300, which is quite high for a, uh, the amplitude on one of them. Now, as we come past this strap, it is, it's curved just nicely. It's one of these where it looks nice and solid. Um, you know, it is quite thin. Normally, I'm not always a fan of very thin leather straps, but this feels a really nice one. And now on the end here, we also have a signed clasp. Um, buckle I should state now let me, I'll put it on my wrist so you've got an idea how it looks but zoom out quick wrist check I'm wearing a Zin EZM1 on a Artiman um, cell cloth strap which I'm going to be reviewing very uh, soon for the channel and Bob what do you have on there sir ah Bob there he is with his long jeans flagship her heritage Sometimes I think he's the one, it's more his channel than mine. So anyway, my wrist size is about 7.25 um, inches. And let's just quickly put this on here so you can see how it looks. And there you go. I think it's absolutely lovely. See how snug it fits down on the wrist. It's one of these where you, I don't know how you'd best describe this. Would you say it's a dress watch? Yeah, a chronograph dress watch. I think that's kind of how I see this watch as. It really is, think, a little bit more dressy, but quite unusual for a dress watch being that it's actually a chronograph. You don't see that very often. But as you can see, this would easily fit under a cuff. And after all, that's all a dress watch is about, really. Does it fit under the cuff? Is it a good looking watch? And I think it ticks both those watches, uh, both those points. Anyway, all the best, guys. If you want to know any more, uh, leave them in the comments below. But most importantly, Stay safe out there. Bye.